Dead wax. All right. The clap. I don't have the clap. But <laughs> and on that note. <laughs> Great way to start a podcast. There you go. <laughs> Hello, all you PB&J otters, and welcome to the Dead Wax Show. Get out of the groove and get into the Dead Wax. I am Chris, and I am joined by my older brother, Brent, and we have a very special guest with us today. Guest, will you introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm Scott Hendrickson. I go by Vinyl by Scott on Instagram. And Scott's one of our close friends. Yep. Close friend, avid Lego collector, but we'll get into that, right? In case you couldn't tell already. This is now a Lego podcast. <laughs> this is a Lego podcast. Uh, Brent and Scott, how are you two doing these days? Uh, Scott, I'll let you go first. Guest first, right? Sure. Yeah, I'm I'm doing really good. Um, I've got to hang out with Chris for the past two days in a row. So I'm on cloud nine. I'm doing great. Oh, geez, Louise. Well, I thought my <laughs> days were going good, but gee, <laughs> thoroughly, I'm not doing that great. Hey, I I'm did nothing the last week. two Don't days. <laughs> I've spent the last two days crying listening to 30. So, um, yeah, thanks for the end. <laughs> I'm sorry we couldn't go easy on you. Oh, geez. I was just a child, Chris. <laughs> Anyways, um, great intro, though. Loved it. Getting into the groove. I mean, get out of the groove into the dead wax. I think we've got to throw on there. I think this would be great. Welcome to dead wax with waffles and the stooge. I honestly think. Thanks. That'd be that'd be good. Uh, yeah. It's better than Schmiegel on the beam, right? <laughs> <laughs> waffles, waffles in the, the stooge. stooge, stooge yep. and waffles. Yep, there you go. Anyways, uh, doing great. I'm excited to have Scott on with us. Um, Scott's got an incredible collection. I've got some questions for him. So um, I don't know. I'll, I'll pass back over to you, Chris, and see where we're going. Where we're going next to this bad boy. Absolutely. Before we get too far, I just want to say that both Brent and Scott are two of my favorite people on the planet. So I am very stoked that we're all together here as a family here on this day for the Dead Wax podcast or Dead Wax show because we're we're a family. (laughs) And and if there are any questions about this, I went to three concerts this week, went a little bit wild. And uh, so, so, uh, so the voice might be a little bit in and out. We'll see, but you know. Which three shows? Tell us. Who are the headliners? Just the headliners. Oh, I'm not going to tell you just the headliners are going over each show. Oh, okay, so uh, on, on Tuesday, I saw Hot Mulligan, Prince Daddy and the Hyena, uh, Sincere Engineer, and Super American. That show you're, was the You're making show. those up. Those are all made-up names. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I love those bands. Prince Daddy and the Hyena. Oh, mwah. Okay. And then uh, Scott and I went and saw Tiny Moving Parts, Capstan, Belmont. He's got this. He's got the hoodie on. Look at this. That show was great too. And then last night I saw Alkaline Trio and War on Women. And oh my gosh, it was a great week. So, boom. Look at this. Uh, sorry, tangent. But you know what? You know what we should do, guys. We should talk about records. We should talk yeah. about music. Yeah. So what we're gonna do? Let's dive on into today's conversation to get us talking about records and our own personal collections. And what we're gonna do is each of us are gonna talk about. Our top three favorite artists. Time out. Time out. Time out. I'm sorry. Before we jump into that topic, sorry to interrupt your flow, Chris. I, I had a few questions for Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to ask Scott a few questions. Oh, Uh-oh. yes. Let's okay, ask Scott go, a few questions. So, our, so our, our, our two listeners will be able to know who Scott is. Well, I guess <laughs> I guess it's only one since Scott's on the show. <laughs> I love this. Let's sorry I got too excited. Okay. So, Scott. Yeah, what, like, what, how long have you been collecting records? Let us know. How long has it been going? I've been collecting records since 2014. And I had uh, probably two years where I was collecting records and didn't have a record player. (laughs) So I think in, I think in uh, late 2015, early 2016 is when I got my actual record player and started actually using and listening to those records. But I've been collecting since 2014 so awesome. it, it many, started yeah. slow and, and had kind of an exponential curve in any amount oh of that's purchases. how that's how it goes that's how it goes yeah, um yeah. how many do you have now would you say in your collection if you had to ballpark it i have 
450 in my discogs. I just hit 450. Oh, nice. And there's a few that I haven't I haven't scanned in yet. So I know I'm over that, but 450s. Okay. And and who would you say like your your like name off a few of your favorite bands? Like where, where or what genres do you typically gravitate to? Well, we'll get into our favorite bands today later, right? Yeah. Um but I grew up I grew up in the punk ska scene in Southern California. And so I think that has a big influence on, on where I came from. Surprisingly, I don't have a lot of, I think, my formative records because I started collecting later in life. Um, but I generally listen to everything except country. So you're gonna fit um, right in, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's exactly what I said. <laughs> yeah. So I, I mean, but I I generally have, you know, punk, post-hardcore, rock centric collection um but i also have a deep love for jazz and blues um for show tunes and soundtracks and uh yeah so there will be rap albums in my collection that show up every once in a while there will be you know some jazz classics and but usually you'll see rock and and things in that area awesome perfect And, and, uh, and then my last question unless chris has a question go for it how many black keys albums do you have in your collection I have two. It's not enough. It's, it's not, not enough. enough. There's never enough black keys for for the studio. Needs to go up. Needs to go up. Which, which black keys albums do you have? Um, that's a good question. If you don't, if you don't know off the top of your head, that's right. I don't know off the off the top of my head. I have the one with the egg. Oh yeah, that's uh, Magic Potion. Yep. And so I have Magic Potion. Let's see. Put me on the spot here. And too. I have Delta Cream. There you go. And Which you, Delta Cream isn't even Black Keys original songs, right? It's all covers of pretty old, much. Oh. old songs, but it's a fantastic album. Yeah. Surprised too, you don't have the mainstream ones like Brothers and uh, El Camino and whatnot. So that's impressive. Yeah, I think El Camino is probably my favorite. I need to pick it up. Um, all right. Uh, get that $270 box, that one. <laughs> um, worth it. All right. I'll yeah, stop now. Chris. I'll, I'll pass it back over to you, my friend. And then we'll, we'll no, I'm so sorry. I, we should have done the intro. So it's like, <laughs> that was, that was the misstep. The dead wax show There's no missteps. is not perfect. So we're, we're learning, we're growing, we're thriving, we're breathing, we're eating, we're drinking in every moment. Chris says that every day. <laughs> I said that to myself in the mirror while like look, staring at my reflection without blinking. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, so what we're going to do for today's prompt to learn about our record collections, we're going to talk about our top three favorite bands and what our top favorite record is from that band. Scott, Sweet. since you're our guest, will you please go first? Yeah, I guess. Is he doing I'm all three sure. right now or just one at a time? So let's let's do uh, one at a time and okay. we'll just go back and forth. And what we'll do, Scott, is tell us, of course, who the artist is yep. and, you know, if you have any good history with that band or something like that. And then also give us a why of why that's your favorite record by that band. And try to do it in under 20 seconds. Okay. I'm not sure where to, <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I already failed. I'm not sure where to start. If I start with my favorite or if I build up to that, I think I'm going to build oh, yeah, up. Let's go, build let's up. go three, two, one, three, two, one. That sounds way fun. Let's do that. So I'm not sure three and two, they they're interchangeable. I don't okay. have a set one on that, but I'm going to go first with the deer hunter Beautiful. act That's... five can you even um, believe that <laughs> can you believe that i would pick the deer hunter so this one's called hymns with the devil and confessional and i absolutely love the deer hunter i harassed chris for weeks into listening to this band um and why act five uh if you are not familiar with the deer hunter they are a huge concept album band so getting into their discography can be overwhelming because as this is called, this is act five of an ongoing story about a character boy. Um, and in between acts three and four, the deer hunter decided to do a whole separate concept project called the color spectrum, um, where they did a bunch of four song EPs interpreting different colors um, in the color spectrum. And they did the standalone album migrant. And then Casey composed a standalone symphony album um, of classical music and then he returned and composed acts four and five together um, and act five is my favorite because it's the culmination of all of that right so i think it's it's casey and you know the deer hunter at their best 
Um, and it gathers all of that and takes all of the symphony and all the storytelling and all of the experimentation and things that Casey has done before. And it encapsulates it in one album and it's amazing. And I love it. So that's my first album. And if anyone is interested in the deer hunter or not interested in the deer hunter, I will gladly harass you into listening to them until you cry to one of their songs. So may I, may I give a testimony to this? <laughs> because, because Scott legitimately harassed me and I was like, you know what? I should listen. And it was amazing. I loved it. I was, I was on vacation and I had a lot of opportunities to listen to music. So I said, Scott, I'm going to tell you what I think of every album after I listen to it. And each one I was like, Scott, this was, this was amazing. <laughs> this was so good. And he mentioned that because I did tell him I cried to the song Remembered off of the Act 4, I believe it's Remembered. I think so, yeah. Yeah. So highly recommend. Great put, Great pick. Yep. Nice. Nice. I, I haven't been bullied into, the, into Deer Hunter yet. Well, you're but, in for a treat. Uh, oh. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> you want me to go next? Yeah, go next. Yep. All right. So I'm I was a little hesitant to pick this one because I'm I'm afraid I think Chris might be picking it, but I figured what the hell? It means so much. Uh first one is fo- <laughs> I'm just kidding. Get that the hell out of here. That's my wife. He's not here. kidding everybody. Brent the Swifty. <laughs> um all right, here, we'll start with this one. See, with my favorite artist, like I have one, you know, we all know who it is. My favorite, after that, everything is kind of, it changes day to day. Um, so if picking three was super hard for me, but I think this is this is a good one to start with. So um, I'm going to go with, here we go. Every Hero Needs a Villain by Zarface. Once again, um, I, I don't really have a favorite Zarface album. I love them all and they're all great. So you can just pick one and listen to it and you'll enjoy it, especially if you're a hip hop fan. Um, I love, I'll try to get the glare off of it, but just look at the artwork, man. It's so fun like this. And then uh, Zarface is, you know, for those who aren't familiar, it's a trio. Uh, they got DJ 7L, Esoteric, and then they've got Inspector Deck from Wu-Tang, who's a part of it. And it's just like nerd hip hop, you know, they'll rap about like, comic book stuff, pro wrestling stuff, movies, all this kind of stuff. And they take nerdy stuff and they make it, I don't know, kind of fun and cool. So um, that's, that's, that's my number three. Um, once again, I could have picked any Zarface album and I would have showed it to you. I just think this one's got a really cool uh, cover. So anyways. and the cover on that's awesome. So there you go. Amen. That's my, that's my number three. Love it. What's so funny, remember when I, remember earlier when I said that you two are like two, two of my favorite people on the planet? So Scott bullied me into listening to The Deer Hunter. And then uh, Brent has bullied me into listening to Zarface. And I bought that record just because you said it was so good. So maybe I don't actually have a taste in music. Maybe my taste in music is you two. Congratulations. There you go. Okay, I'll, be, I'll do mine. Um, we'll get the elephant out of the room. And go with Alkaline Trio. <laughs> so this is Good Morning by Alkaline Trio. Uh, this is my favorite Alkaline Trio album because it is like, a, I'm a little bit biased. Couldn't tell. I think the first six Alkaline Trio albums are perfect. But this is my favorite one because it has like the most danceability and fun. And it's also kind of dark and creepy all together. And it's brilliant. This has so many bomb hits. This could be Love is on this album. And that's one of my favorite Alkaline Trio songs. This is just the black standard pressing. Um, but this, this record was actually like insanely hard to get. Uh, these usually go for two or $300. And I was able to get it for 60. So Dang. if my buddy Sean <laughs> Ramey happens to see this, you are the reason I smile. So thank you very much. <laughs> anyway, I- Alkaline Trio, good morning is my number three pick. I didn't get to show Michael pressing. There it is. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, and sorry, the reflection all yours. over there. That is so sick. Scott, show yours. <gasps> oh, my gosh. I love half and half, dude. That's so good. Yeah. All right. Back to you, Scott. All right, Scott. Back to me for, for pick number two, huh? Number two. So pick number two um, is Manchester Orchestra. Heard of them. Simple Math. It's a great album. Great album. Um, I love Manchester. Great album. And this, between Deer Hunter and Manchester, it's two and three. They they wrote they they're interchangeable in those positions. I love them both, and they're such great bands. Um, why Simple Math? Simple Math is actually the album I discovered Manchester on, so I'm biased towards it. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think it's also a great kind of midpoint in their discography and a, a great entry point into 
what came before it and and what comes after. Um, so for anyone that's not familiar with the band, I would I would recommend them start here with Simple Math. Um, it's an album, you know, Andy Andy holds the lead singer for for Manchester. He started Manchester when he was like a teenager in high school, as, as a lot of bands do, um, but was writing super mature lyrics of of an old soul. Um, got married super young, uh, which which some people might relate with. Maybe not. I don't know. But <laughs> he got married super young, didn't really know, you know, what he was doing, had had struggles, almost got divorced, but didn't. And this album is kind of like that that catharsis of, of working through some of those struggles a, a few years into being abandoned and, and traveling and being on the road. And so it's got some really emotionally heavy songs and topics. Um, and the and the music video for Simple Math is bizarre and crazy. And I love it. Um, but they're a wonderful band. They're not an orchestra. <laughs> what? But uh, what? <laughs> not that I said what? <laughs> what? Yeah, they're not an orchestra. Um, they're they're a rock band, indie rock band. Um, but it, it's a beautiful album. Before you know, is is, or I guess their more recent stuff has been more cinematic. Um, but after Simple Math, um, and I think after Cope, Andy actually Andy and and Robert McDowell from the band actually went and composed a musical score um for a movie and i think that influenced their their later stuff and they're kind of having a new freshman sophomore album type scenario with uh with um black mile to the surface and million mass of god but i think like i said this is a good midpoint where you you kind of get the stuff before and you get a hint of what's to come and it's a great starting point and entry to the band and i love it absolutely awesome i, I swear i'll quit talking both of you talk but um just like a couple weeks ago, before we even invited Scott on the Dead Wax show, he told me to listen to this album, and I did, and it was great. The song Pensacola is a solid 10 out of 10. Pensacola. Isn't that one like a special pressing, by the way? Ooh, cool. Splatter. That's White beautiful. with red splatter. Yeah, I love that. That splatter is also really high quality when you look at it. It's a really good... Mm -hmm. Yeah. If anybody watching this does not collect records... You can tell when a splatter is actually high quality and when <laughs> good work. Brent. All right. Let's, your, let's, let's get your number two. My number two. This was actually. Call the us your toilet because we want your number two. <laughs> this is the first album that I ever purchased with my own money. So I had gotten albums before this as gifts for like wow. birthdays and whatnot. This is the first one I ever went to the store. Best Buy it was back in the 90s and actually purchased. Wasn't on vinyl. Wasn't it wasn't into to records back then. It was a CD. Still, nonetheless, the first album I ever bought. Here it is. Odile by Beck. Oh, Beck. Beck. Yep. Beck. He's once again, he's just. He's one of my, he's been one of my favorites since this album. This is, this is, this was my introduction to Beck actually um, where it's at when that was a single, I didn't even know what the song loser was until after this one, but um, this album from, you know, top to bottom, no skippable tracks, everything's a beat. Um, you know, Beck's lyrics are, I don't know if he's just crazy or if they're super coded or if I'm just dumb, I can never find a lot of <laughs> meeting in the, in the lyrics on this album, but they're all great and I love them. And maybe that's what's so great about it is just like, what is he talking about? <laughs> so anyways, um, great album. Uh, my number two, like Beck, he's one of my favorites of all time. But once again, I don't know if he's my second favorite artist. It's just, you know, this album's so great and I had to share it. So there you go. And this one, it's not super fancy. It is the Vinyl Me Please version from a couple of years ago. And it's just like a, a okay. poop swirl. It's hard to see. Oh, cool. The poop, the poop swirl. swirl. <laughs> yeah. It's like if someone diarrheaed in a toilet and then mixed it up with a stick. <laughs> Anyways. All right. All the poop jokes we can make in a solid three minutes. <laughs> the great job. <laughs> oh, goodness. If this isn't how we get canceled. Uh, all right. I'll get my number two. You all know how Brent talks about the Black Keys a lot. I know. There's a book about just as much. Yeah. And it's The Cure. So <laughs> this is the head on the door by The Cure. There we go. Uh, so those familiar with The Cure know that the first eight albums by The Cure are the greatest things ever made, right? Well, this is my favorite Cure album. It is uh, the most like 
in my opinion, the catchiest Cure album. If you're familiar with the history of the Cure, as one of the founders of goth rock, they the first few albums were very heavy in the goth sound, and this is when they started like trying to make other sounds so this was a little more like radio friendly it was a it wasn't like as depressing as usual and so the songs are really fun and catchy but they're also kind of sad and that to me is like the ultimate balance of the cure is when it's fun and catchy but you can also listen to it in a taco bell parking lot bawling your eyes out um this is standard who one. hasn't who hasn't been there who hasn't been, who hasn't <laughs> at 11 o'clock at night gone and bought 12 Cinnabon Delights from Taco Bell, driven them on the way home crying just because you're feeling it. Anyway, uh, head on the door by The Cure. If you are looking to get into The Cure, this is always my like one to get into first. This is very easily accessible and the song Six Different Ways is on this album. And that is a very good song. Awesome. So there you go. Head on the door. Is, my is it a cool song. pressing? What's, is it just black? No, it's just black. Nah, uh, the, cure do, <laughs> the cure doesn't really do uh, like special pressings because they just don't need to. Like <laughs> most cure fans are not looking for splatters. Most cure fans and, want black anyway. Hey, hey, maybe, maybe there'd be more cure fans. Exactly. If, uh, they exactly. That. All cure fans wear black all the time, so we might as well have our records be black too. Yeah. All right, like Scott. Yours. Number one. Number, number one, one, number one. So All right. Excited. So this is my my absolute favorite band for the past decade or so. Ever since I was introduced to them, um, they quickly pushed out Bad Religion um, and became my number one band. So this is Beggars by Thrice. And uh, I'll, I'll actually remember this time. Oh, nice. Ooh, that one's pretty. Another another pretty splatter. Um, this one's uh, actually clear. You can't tell because it's behind the you know the album, but it's a clear with a blue splatter. Um, Beggars by Thrice. Another kind of mid album um, by a band in the middle of their discography. I absolutely love Thrice. As much as I talk about Deer Hunter, um, and one of my friends doesn't believe me that Thrice is my favorite band. It, it is. Um, and why Beggars? Beggars is again. Uh, like Manchester, this is the album where I was introduced to Thrice on the when they were touring and supporting Beggars, um, and they're they changed the sound like pretty much every album after after their first few releases. Uh, they like to explore different spaces and kind of challenge each other and push off each other. Always in the in the rock space, but um, they make different different sounds and different types of albums. They're, uh, they're known for having odd time signatures. Um, so a lot of people know them for a long time for doing that. But uh, Beggars is, is the album where they said, let's kind of strip things back and just go in studio and, and kind of recreate what it's like, um, you know, at a concert where we just have the four of us on a stage with our instruments and we don't have a lot of extra sound effects and a lot of that extra things. Like, let's just get in a room and make an album. Um, and and the, and that's the result, and it's it's amazing. There's tons of great music by Thrice. I could have picked any of their albums. Um, even their most recent album is. Some fans have already said like this is my favorite Thrice album. And I think it's I think uh, so. Horizons East just came out in September, and I think it's 11th in their discography. So they've been oh. around a long time. And for for fans who've been with the band for a long time to go, their 11th album is my favorite album by them. I think. I think is indicative of the quality of music that they put out. Mm -hmm. um, Dustin is my favorite lyricist. His lyrics are amazing. He often tells stories. Um, he references literature at, or, and, and in older stuff, he, he references some Christian themes um, or books. Like he, he has a early in their discography, they have um, a song named after a C.S. Lewis sci-fi novel, like just like stuff like that, or they, they reference like Greek mythology and in a few songs. Um, and just the storytelling of Dustin's lyrics is amazing. Um, and Tepe, uh, they have two guitarists, um, are, are just some of the best guitarists and the parts that they write are insane. Um, and uh, then you have two brothers in the band uh, Riley on drums and Ed on bass, uh, the Breckenridge brothers. They are the groove that those two brothers bring is just 
stellar. And Horizons East um, captures that. I think, you know, they self-produced their most recent album. Uh, and I think it helped, like they produced it how they want to hear it. And, I, and it brings that groove to the forefront and drums and bass on that album are killer. And people are just like blown away, like, oh, I'm amazing how good this sounds. And it's really like, if you go see Thrice Live, like that's how good the Breckenridge Brothers sounds. And I'm, and I'm so glad that it's captured on the most recent album in a beautiful way. But sorry, I'm, I'm talking about Beggars. <laughs> Not Thrice, but, but Beggars is, is again, the album that got me into them. Um, it followed a really ex experimental phase, like Thrice put out um, Visu and Alchemy Index, which which took the band in a new in a new sound direction. And then Beggars, like I said, they got they got back into a room and stripped it back and produced just an amazing album. Every song for me by Thrice, except one, um, is a no skip no skip song in their whole discography. But this one just it just beautiful beautiful album. If you if you want to check out something by Thrice, I think this is a great place to start. I'm just looking at the track list like it is it is a beautiful album and everyone should listen to this album and uh, and enjoy it, in my opinion. So my favorite band, Thrice, to go back to the other question, like what are your top three bands? Now we've gone through that, right? Deer Hunter, Manchester Orchestra can fight it out for two and three, but Thrice will always be my number one. And Beggars is my favorite album because it got me into them and introduced me to them. So I'll always have that soft spot in my heart for it. Um, so there you go. Nice. Well, Were, weren't they just in town recently too? Or is that, am I remembering that wrong? <laughs> they were just in town recently. So in, in uh, mid-October, they came through town. And I unfortunately <gasps> missed it. Oh my so gosh. I, Utah has this thing in, in October called fall break. Where instead, it's like spring break, right? Schools get a week off of school in fall. Um, I think it, they, they never admit it, but I think it started because all the kids would miss school for hunting season. And so they just started making it an actual holiday. So, so if you notice fall break always coincides with the, when hoping se hunting season opens, but for all the people that don't hunt, we go to California. <laughs> That's what so, I we did. Were, so we, <laughs> we went to the beach, um, and we went to Oceanside and, and relax. And I got to meet up one of, a, a person I met on Instagram when we went digging, digging record bins, bottled self-esteem, if he watches. Um, and Those so anyways, some that week, what? That's the week you picked me up those singles, That's the right? week I picked you up a bunch of singles. Yeah. Um, so that week I was actually in California when thrice came through Salt Lake city. Uh, and then they were in California, like a week or two after I was in California, oh it just didn't gosh. work out. And I missed in this turn. Thrice is a band. Like they, they, they went on tour and the tour didn't stop in Utah. So I actually took my cousin and we drove to California for the weekend to watch them play in LA and then drove home. Um, like that's how much I love the band. So to, for me to miss them on this tour, uh, I was, I was pretty bummed, but I've seen them seven times live. We just counted last night when I was hanging out with Chris and uh, this would have been eight on their most recent tour. Uh, but I devastatingly was not able to attend. Sorry for your loss. Yeah, rest Thank in you. peace. It's okay. <laughs> Thrice rules, though. Thrice uh, rules. All righty. I'll go. Brent, what's um, one? So before I, like, I just got to say, I think Scott's too refined for our show. Yeah. Scott, like, detail. He is. And, um, like, I, I don't know if you guys watch How I Met Your Mother. Have, have either of you ever watched that show? Yeah. yeah. So there's an episode where Lily's trying to sell her art because she's got massive credit card debt. And Robin and Ted are like looking at her art that's being displayed somewhere. And Robin's like, oh, this art is really neat. And I like the colors and it's neat, you know, and she, and then Ted, <laughs> Ted does this Ted Mosby thing. Oh, it has this, this candescence that's reminiscent of this famous artist. I feel like you and me are like, oh, it's neat. It's neato burrito. And <laughs> that's like the Ted Mosby. <laughs> Anyways, that's for our, our how I met your mother uh, niche there. Anyways. Um, so I'll get into it. My first one, we all know what it is. Taylor. I mean, no, sorry. Damn it. <laughs> oh, look what we made you do. <laughs> Shut up, Scott. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> so hey. I'm sharing this one because my, my favorite one I actually shared last week. So I didn't want to have to repeat, but El Camino, like I said, it's, it's, it's edging its way for number one. Um, so many great songs on this album. Uh, I was going to show my box set, but I figured it'd be too much of a flex. So here's just the regular one. Plus it's heavy. <laughs> so um, El Camino, 
so many great albums uh, so, sorry songs <laughs> and my favorite uh tied for my my number one favorite song on this little black submarines um it's it's a song some people say maybe it's about breakup or some people think it's about overcoming addiction um anyways i love how the song starts slow and then dan arbach with his bluesy riff guitars that he just freaking wails on comes in and just him and Patrick shred the second half of that song. And it's, it's just great. It's like a masterpiece in my opinion, even so much th that um, here, I'm gonna put this down. I I haven't never gotten a tattoo and like, I, I don't think I ever will, but I'm toying with the idea now. Um, and one of the things I was thinking about getting is maybe some little black, like a few bl little black submarines somewhere. Yeah. Cause I thought that'd be kind of cool. Just like a silhouette of it, not like something detailed where you can see everything. It's like, you know, a black, silhouetted just anyway yeah just this tattoo, shows yeah. how much i love that song and the band i mean it's no secret black keys they're def definitively my number one everything else like kind of like what you said scott it can change and, and everything so yeah. but yeah. el camino i don't think i have to tell everyone to go check that out i think it's a pretty pretty <laughs> popular album so um that's that is my number one so you should get that black submarine like under your eye. Under my eye, like, yeah. A little, a little like, teardrop black. Yeah. Tattoo. I'll, I'll, oh my gosh, a teardrop it. black submarine is actually a sick tattoo idea. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so cool. <laughs> I love it. Um, Before we go to Chris, yeah. I love El Camino. Like I said, I think it's probably my, my favorite. This, when we talk about what got you into record collecting, this was my first record I ever purchased. Nice. No way. I was like, wow, that looks really cool. And I love Thrice. I should buy it. And like I said, I didn't have a record player for another like a year and a half or two years, but this was the, this was the album and the band and the reason that I started, started collecting. That's so awesome. Beggars by Thrice. I love it. Um, to go off of Brent's intro of mine's not intelligent at all either. <laughs> I wish mine had a deeper meaning. In fact, mine's going to be quite a change of pace and tone from what we've been doing. <laughs> White Chapel. Let's see it. It's white chapel. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. White chapel is my favorite band and white chapel is a death core band. So it's a little bit different than everything we've been talking about, but this is also my first concept album to discuss. Now some history is noted. White chapel is named after the area of London where Jack the Ripper murdered prostitutes. <laughs> and there is a common <laughs> belief that Jack the Ripper was also a doctor that carved up bodies of prostitutes as well. This is their very first album. It's called The Somatic Defilement. And the whole album is a concept album of what perhaps Jack the Ripper did to dead bodies. And let me tell you, it's a great album. There are so many amazing songs on here that are very heavy and very violent. So if anybody is a little bit squeamish, don't read the lyrics, just listen to the songs. Um, but the, this record, oh, it's also really pretty. Uh, uh, this is a beautiful, beautiful record. This, this album has a bunch of great songs that I absolutely adore. My favorite Whitechapel album is called Ear to Ear, or my favorite Whitechapel song is called Ear to Ear, and it's on this one. We have Divergination Studies is on this one, Vicer Exciser is on this one. There's a lot of great songs that are very brutal. But um, yeah, this is this is my favorite Whitechapel album. I think it's also the first Whitechapel album I listened to, so maybe that's why it's my favorite. Um, but it is it is very, very high quality deathcore uh, that I, I cannot say enough good things about. So if you do want to learn about um, human anatomy and the disposal of bodies, listen to The Somatic Defilement by Whitechapel because it is a solid 10 out of 10. The next time Brent and Scott and I are going to get together, we're going to sit in silence and not speak to one another. We're just going to listen to The Somatic Defilement and take notes. With our families too, right? With our families. They're going to love family. the song um, Vicer Exciser. And and just so you know, if you are squeamish by the words, you can still listen to it because it's okay. You won't understand a damn thing they're saying. You so. won't understand <laughs> it. Exactly. <laughs> just listen to it and have fun and vibe out with the buds. Don't Google it. <laughs> Google. That was anyway. great though. You, you guys, we all picked really good things. It was really interesting to hear like the why. That's my favorite part is the why behind each one. So I loved it. Sweet. So are we transitioning now? Is it my turn? It is your turn, my it's, man. It's game time. It's game. I'm excited. Sorry. I get excited for the game stuff. Um, all right. So it is the game part of the show. Um, this week we're playing a brand new game because, uh, you know, 
we're kind of featuring these new games, seeing what sticks and what doesn't. Are you going to say something, Chris? No. Okay. Um, so we're going to be having, because we have a guest on the show, we're going to have a competition now. So it's going to be Uh-oh. Scott <clears throat> versus Chris, and we're going to see who will do better at this game. So the name of this game, by the way, we have like the three most generic white names I think ever, <laughs> ever made, <laughs> right? Scott, Brent, and Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so the name of today's game is called Stage Name. So what's going to happen is I am going to name a name. I'm going to put out, I'm going to say a name. You have to tell me that person's stage name. So for example, if I say Marshall Mathers, what would your answer be? Eminem. M&M. There you go. So you knew, you know how to play this in. So okay. it's a competition. So I love this. in order to, an- you can't just blurt out the answer. You need to blurt out your name first. Whoever says their name first, I will call on you. You'll have five, an- you'll have five <laughs> seconds to give a response. Okay. You can't just sit there and think about it. So you have five seconds. We'll say three seconds, actually. You better, you better get out there quick. So, okay. All right. So what does winner uh, get? The winner gets a big hug. Ooh. <laughs> Sick. High stakes game here. Yeah. Very high stakes. Okay. And I'll also let you know the genres because I think some of these might be a little difficult. But It'll help, yeah. Yeah. So are you guys ready? Mm-hmm. Okay. Who's keeping score? I guess I'll try to do that too. I got a pin. So okay. let me write your names right down real quick. I'll just put uh chris yeah yeah steve and eric all right there we go um just some generic white names so question number one remember say your name first don't just blur out the answer and if you want to answer in the form of a question that's okay as well um but you know we'll we'll, we'll accept either way so here we go this comes in the genre of hip-hop who is christopher wallace Wow. Chris, I'm just going to guess. <laughs> yeah, go for it. 50 cent. Uh, wrong. Come on. Scott, just think hip hop big names. There was a hint in that. You can't go? Chris, you can't go, Chris. Yes. Biggie. You got it. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. There we Biggie's go. real name was Christopher Wallace. Christopher Wallace, yep. That is so funny. I did not know that. And uh, we just lost our hip-hop demographic and all of our street friends. So <laughs> thank you, guys. <laughs> we've, already, we've already lost Swifties. We might as well just knock off a different audience every episode. Okay. So I'm going to skip some of these hip-hop ones <laughs> based off that response <laughs> to make it more interesting. Uh Let's see here. Wow, now I'm nervous for the rest of these. <laughs> yeah, man. All right, here we go. I shouldn't have done the Eminem one as an example. Okay, here we go. Remember, say your name first. This this person's real name is Stephanie Joanne Angelina Garmona uh, oh. Germanota. Chris. Yes. Lady Gaga. Boom! One for Chris. Bam. Good job. Did you know that one, Scott? Or were you even like, I have no idea? Nope. I should have said. I don't think I'm going to be very good at this game. (laughs) Oh no! All right, track two is Norwegian Wood. Chris, what's the album? Shut up! Oh my god! (laughs) (laughs) You remember when I was like, "Oh, these are my two favorite people in the world." (laughs) Okay, here we go. This one comes in the genre. of I'll do five. We'll see. We'll go from there. This one comes in the genre of we'll call it alternative rock, like popular alternative rock. Okay. Think big alternative rock bands from like the 90s that are still making music today. This person's real name is Michael Balzeri. God. Go for it. Is that Flea? Boom, Scott. Yes, nice work for Scott. Nice. Work, Scott. Good job. I wouldn't have known that. So, yeah. That, that's credit to you. That's awesome. I almost bought a Red Hot Chili Peppers album last night. He certainly oh, did. dang. Which one was it? Stadium Arcadium. They had the the four LP uh, Grey one. Whale, and I was super tempted by it. You should have done it. I got it. That. Has my favorite Red Hot Chili Pepper song, which I told Chris to listen to. Ready Made is my favorite RHCP song, and it's on Stadium Arcadium. Nice, nice. It's a great album. I also recommend it on vinyl. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, we've done three. The score is two to one. Scott's in the lead. So, question. Here we go. Number four. Uh, this. Is coming in the genre of hip hop. 
So here we go. Let's see if we get this. Think once again, think big names hip hop. I'm not going obscure. We're not doing some deep dive here. Here we go. This person's real name is Sean Carter. Chris. Yes. JV. Yeah, another point hey. for Chris. Ties it up. Uh, it's because it's- of Carter. That's the only reason I knew because uh Beyonce. Yeah. Because of Beyonce. Beyonce. All, right. All right. I'm looking through my options here and I'm gonna see. Okay, oh, this is our tiebreaker, huh? This, this is, is the tiebreaker. Two, two. two to two. Yeah. Um, I okay. gotta get that hug. All right, yeah, here we go. Know. Here we go. This one is is your last question. Here we go. This is coming in the genre of like pop, but not like '80s or '90s. Well, yeah, he's been around for a while. That's a hint. You'll know by the name, anyways. This this used to be his name, but he has since had his name legally changed to what his stage name is. So here we go. Reginald Kenneth Chris. Dwight. Yeah. It's Elton John. And your winner, ladies and hey. gentlemen, Chris. Hey. Nice. Was it too many clues that I gave away, or did you just know that? Reginald is the, yeah. Reg- There's oh, no other yeah. Reginald who's changed his name. <laughs> there you go. There's not a lot of Reginalds out there. Reginalds. Anyways, there you go. Chris is the winner. Three to two. Hey. Started off a little rocky, but you guys pulled it out there in the end, so... Thank you Good for job. doing less hip hop ones. That was really nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> Christopher Wallace. Mm, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad Scott got it. So we didn't have another repeat of last week where I stare at the camera. And go, po- <laughs> where, where <laughs> no, like, right. I stare at the camera and just like, just tell me, Brent, I'm not going to get it. <laughs> You're taking too long, Brent. How about this one? Tupac Shakur. <laughs> Is that his real name, by the way? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. What a fun fact. All right. Fun fact. Sure. All fun. right. Um, I win a big hug. I'm very happy. It's yep. awesome because I never hug either of you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Not since uh, what a couple days for, ago. For the watch for the people watching, I hug all of my friends kind of a lot. And so there you go. Yeah, we uh, were gonna talk to you about that, Chris. <laughs> yeah, it's a disease. <laughs> um <laughs> so Brent, did we get any questions? Let's see here. No, we did not. Well, we got one. But might as well throw it out there. Okay. So Jessica, my wife, <laughs> wants to know. Here's this QA segment, just so everyone knows. That was kind of a, a, a quick transition. Oh, oh yeah. You hey, need everyone, to make a gonna... jingle. We do need to make a QA, <laughs> QA. Last segment is QA. There we go. All right. So <laughs> question. And this one, we'll have Scott answer this one. Who would win in a fight between Waffles and the Stooge? Waffles and the Stooge. A great <laughs> radio name. Um, I'm going to have to go with the Stooge. Any reason? I mean, you've got a pretty aggressive looking bulldog on your hat. Um, oh, yeah. Look at that. And, you know, waffles, when they're too syrupy, can be a little flimsy. So, I don't know. I think the Stooge would... Would be the syrupy waffle. Well, Scott's assuming we're gonna have syrup involved in our. It's gonna somehow. be. This is a syrup fight. There's gonna be syrup. You've seen mud wrestling, <laughs> yes, but yes. have you seen waffle and syrup wrestling? Two the big Canada, shirtless right? men. Yeah, it's what life is like in Canada. That's exactly what life is like in Canada. Oh, well, it's gonna be a Canadian fight, eh? Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, I'll go with Stooge. All right. Cool. Sorry, Chris. I, I completely agree, by the way. I don't, think <laughs> I, I don't think I could ever win in a fight between the, the stooge and the waffles. No, dude, you would. I'm I'm like, I'm only I'm 37, but I'm like an old 37. So like I'm 37, like, I'm not old. I'm an old 37. And like I my coordination and balance and endurance completely shot. All you'd have to do <laughs> is just kind of outlast me and, and you got it. No problem. Anyways, may, may I remind you of what I said? I was crying at the Taco Bell parking lot eating Cinnabon Delights. <laughs> uh, a light breeze could well, take me out. Well, I have literally never been in a fight in my life. So I've got no experience. So I don't know if, 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 you, if you've been in a fight or not, but. I've been, you've never been in a fight? No, never been in a fight. Let's start one. Okay, sick. Fight club. <laughs> we'll film it. We'll put it on our, uh, our Instagram and TikTok. Scott, you have to do up, by the way. Yeah. I'll, I'll work the camera. I'll get the money shots. Oh my God. I'm moving on to the next question. 
that got dirty real fast. All right, Chris. <laughs> First we're talking big hugs, then we get to this. My gosh, it's the best, best day of my life. Most homoerotic <laughs> episode we've had so far. All right, let's go, Chris. Next question. Uh, so another question um, that I would love to hear both of your answers on is one we get asked as record collectors by people that don't collect records. And that is why, why do you collect records? Scott, I'll let you. Don't let me go first. Go for it. I've gone first on everything. this episode. Brent, you go first, then we'll have Brent, Scott go. You're up. That's All right. I collect records because um, it's a physical manifestation of something in life that I absolutely love. And so it's just kind of fun to have it. And if it's colored or splattered or, you know, have or whatever, that that's just a bonus. You get to look at something pretty while it spins. I, I don't have super hi-fi equipment, so I'm not going to say, oh, the quality of the sound is so much better than listening to it on Spotify. I'm not like that. And sorry if I just shamed, you know, the <laughs> audio files, which I basically just did. Um uh but yeah that's that's not me it's just something fun to collect i love music it's fun to have a physical form of it and i also have an addiction so that's that's the main reason i i collect records i can't stop that's a problem excellent we accept you as you are <laughs> and Scott, you want to go yeah go for it well i didn't have enough expensive hobbies <laughs> collecting plastic objects um you can retire off that board alone <laughs> so so i did i decided to uh collect records um i also don't have a super hi-fi audio setup but i will say you know i've i've loved music for uh, my since i was like 10 i don't know with weird al who was my first probably like person my first concert was weird al in the 90s oh, nice. um Heck yeah and it was amazing but uh I, all of my, most of my, I don't know, most friendships, like the ones we're, we're on this call with right now have started because of music. Um, so I think most of my best friends since, since my adult life, will say that, um, have been started because of music. Um, and so I think, you know, it's, it's something that unifies and brings people together and it's fun to talk about. Um, like Brent said, and it's fun to just like have like a physical manifestation. Like I love this band. And that was why I bought Thrice Beggars. It was like, I love this band. I don't have a record player, but I'll buy this to support them because I don't know, buying something digital did, just didn't feel the same. Like when supporting a band, like I grew up buying CDs and it was like, okay, now you can buy a digital album. And then you started streaming a digital album. And it was like, how do you support a band that you really love? And so it's like, okay, I'll start buying records to, to give the band some money when I'm not like, cause I used to only buy like t-shirts when I saw them live. So it's like, okay, how else can I support a band? I'll buy their album. If I really like something, I'll, I'll buy it on vinyl. Um, so that's why I started getting into it was just, I wanted to support bands that I love um, and albums that I love. And so I started, started buying the music on physical copies and, and it's brought me some new amazing friends in my life, like music always had. So here we are with those two of those people. You know, on a on a side note, most of my friendships were started because of pizza. It's like, nice. oh, you like pizza? I like pizza too. Let's go get some pizza. Another amazing disc. Ninja Turtles. Yes, I'm uh, I'm Donatello. <laughs> nice. Yeah, Donatello for life. Nice. Donatello's. Yeah, I love that. Um, I I I'll say it. I collect it because they sound better. <laughs> I'll, I'll do it happily. <laughs> I, I started collecting records because it sounds infinitely better than digital music does. And uh, I, here's a, this might sound like I do a lot of drugs, but I swear to you, I do not. In my opinion, when I listen to music, I can like see what music sounds like. And when you stream music to me, when I close my eyes, it's like, I see one color just right in front of me. And it's a single bar. There's not much to it. But when I listen to records, since you're hearing everything the artist wanted you to hear, I see all the colors in front of me all of a sudden, and it gets much bigger and wider because you're able to see the breadth and the width that the artist is creating without the need for compression for the sake of digital music. Yeah. So I, I love it for that reason, but also same thing. It's, it's fun to like have a physical thing to hold. There's, there's like a really awesome feeling of listening to one of your favorite records and holding the record, like the holding the, the jacket for it. And looking at the art, reading the lyrics, whatever. There's there's just a great feeling that comes with that. And it's all big and exciting. And 
I mean, not to beat the dead horse, but all of my closest friends I make because of music. So it's it's a great way to make friends. It is a crippling addiction. And uh, <laughs> whatever, like, <laughs> that's the funny thing. Vinyl collectors, none of us deny that it's a horrible hobby to get into that will destroy your finances. And yet none of us stop. So whatever. So that that's that's why I think it sounds better. It's more fun. And it's also, it's cool. It's yeah. cool to collect. It records. does sound better. That's not why I got into it. Yeah. The question um, was why we got into it. But it does sound better. I agree. Speaking of speaking of stopping, um, <clears throat> I, uh, <laughs> not stopping the <laughs> podcast, um, No by November, still going strong. Only got yeah. about a week left. Uh, I've had to l- use a loophole two times now only. But, you know, <laughs> it's a technicality. I still haven't bought anything on vinyl and uh still going so uh one more so you haven't picked up anything this week is what you're saying nope i haven't picked up anything this week proud of you i didn't anyways chris may or may not have bought me a gift (laughs) for christmas excellent maybe but but the first rule about that is that we don't talk about that right (laughs) (laughs) get it it was because of fight club yeah. yeah, we don't talk about that, Chris. And the irony that I told you guys the irony of that situation, right? The irony of just of, say if everybody listening anyway. Like it's no by November. I'm doing my best to to fight my addiction to you know consumerism and all that stuff. <laughs> and here I am torn on whether or not to buy something that's about a movie that's about letting go of like consumerism and materialistic things. And I'm like, I got to have it, you know, <laughs> it's, so just, it's just ironic. Yeah. So it's just kind of funny. Anyway, uh, for all those wondering, it is the fight club soundtrack that yeah. Brent is referring to. Yeah. yeah. So that's yeah, some man. good irony. Every, every single guy who was born in like the eighties or nineties knows what you're talking. <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Amen. Okay. Last question I came up with. This is just a all fun right. little one for the gang. Let's imagine that you could have one record on your want list for free. Just it just pops into your hands one day. You don't have to pay for it. What is like the one record that you want so bad, but you don't want to pay for it? Peter Frampton Live. <laughs> Peter Frampton Live. Peter Frampton. Well, guys, the Dead Wax Show. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Go ahead, Scott. I I would pay for it. I just can't find it. Um, it is I don't know. This isn't going to show up really good. Oh, it's thrice. So, yeah. It's a Manchester Orchestra thrice split, and um, they only made five hundred copies. They've only pressed it once. It's Manchester Orchestra with O oh Brother, two amazing bands who are friends. You love all those bands. Holy cow! Covering No Doubts, Don't Speak, mm. and it's like. I don't remember how long it is, but it's like a 10 minute version of Don't Speak. Don't wow. Speak. Chester Orchestra and, and Oh Brother. And I want it. So and, and then on the on the other side is Thrice covering the Beatles. I want you. She's so heavy. Mm. And it is like two amazing songs that I've, you know, I've gone and listened to on someone who ripped the, the, the album on YouTube because it's it's not on streaming. It's not anywhere. You can only have it if you really? have one of these 500 copies um that they've pressed once and uh I, I i can't find it it's just the last time it was sold on discogs was in february um and i don't even know how it happened because it just popped up that it was sold i never saw a listing so i've been i've been trying to find it for a long time i'm willing to pay the ridiculous money that they're asking for two song you know split uh but i just can't find it so that's that's the one thing if i could magically will that into my hands today i would be over the moon that'd be bomb too yeah yeah i've uh i don't think i've ever cried to that song you guys ever cried to don't speak it's a Absolutely. Touching song. okay uh no doubt was one of my first concerts fun fact Ooh, that is a fun fact no doubt i love fun facts uh, another, no another doubt. topic that we talk about i freaking <clears throat> love no doubt i will defend no doubt all day all right here we go here's mine I don't know if it'll show up. Can you see it? It's Beck, the information deluxe vinyl package. I don't know if, can you see the, uh, does the price show up there? Or is it too fuzzy? No, it's too small. I can't see that one. So there's one for sale right now on Discogs. It's going for $3,900, oh $932. So that's <laughs> okay. the one I'd will into it. And I would not buy if I could. <laughs> that's way too much money. Why is it so much? 
Uh, I think it was limited. Like they didn't really press that album on vinyl except for that deluxe deluxe set at uh, the one time. And so you just can't get it. And that would be the one I'd get. Um, Cause I love that album too, but it just, they don't have it on vinyl. Yeah. That is so lame, but also 3000. I mean, why not? <laughs> okay. I'll pull up mine. Everyone's showing them on their phones. I didn't get that memo. So let me get yeah, it. Yeah. Seconds. I did it because uh, so- Scott did it. I know Scott literally, well, it was genius when he pulled it up. I was like, dang it, that's, that's genius to show everybody. So mine is a mix of nostalgia, why I want it. And also it was just a good album, but this, this also just shows the differences in our music taste. Uh, so this was a metal core band in the two thousands called woe is me. I guess it was like 2010 and uh, they were really, really good. I was a big fan when I was in high school, but they've only made like, this album once on vinyl they made like a hundred of them they resell for a lot of money now i don't know if you can see it this is woe is me yeah. it. it's hard to i remember that album cover it's a great album it looks like he's freestyling <laughs> like he's like what 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 what, what? <laughs> like they they got the tables and a microphone <laughs> that's literally all it is yeah is that it's a dj freestyling for 30 minutes um, no, what was me was fantastic. If anybody is a fellow core kid, they were towards the end of the crab core movement. And uh, my gosh, was I a big fan. So, uh, but they're, they're really hard to get now. That one, there's one available on Discogs for 500. Um, and I don't want to spend that for a single, <laughs> a single album that's maybe 27 minutes long. So, so, so was, the, uh, was the lobster core movement a lot bigger than the crab core movement? You don't really yeah, hear about that one. It's because it was steamed. Um, you don't. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wait. 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 <laughs> Brent, ask that question one more time. <laughs> so was the lobster crab movement a lot smaller than the crab core movement? I mean, it's not as good, but you have to steam their music. Get it instead of stream their music. <laughs> but um, I will just edit this whole part out. You know what? You're awful, <laughs> selfish. <with your> jokes. <laughs> um. <laughs> I am anyway, that was our that was our Q and A section. Q and A. What was your what was your song? Q and A. Q and A. Next last section is Q and A or something like that. Next section <laughs> is the that was the Q and A. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. Is, are we gonna, do we have to have a transition to end the show too? Like a trans. This is the end. We should make it a little more slow. You know, I'm there, speaking of which, you're a Conan O'Brien fan, Scott. Yes. Right. Yep. I'm also a huge Conan O'Brien fan. If you if you go and see him live after the show's over, he actually does a whole "This is the end of the show" song where he like comes yep. out into the stands and sings. Have you been to the one before? I did. Yeah, we we tr- so we tried. I've I seen Conan once. We tried to see him another time where we didn't get in. Um, Ooh, so when he nice. when he uh, when he had his brief stint right on the Tonight Show mm-hmm. for a few months before Jay Leno stabbed him in the back, um, we went and tried to see that show in L.A. Uh, and uh, we didn't get in. And so we were bummed. And then when he went to TBS, um, we did get to go see a recording of it. And so so I did get to experience that. Um, we also had, um, I don't know if you remember when Conan had a superhero made of him. Yeah. Um, when they did that bit. We went to Comic-Con and, and they were giving, San Diego Comic-Con, and they were giving away Conan oven mitts from, oh, from that character. Because that's so what he had. had Conan yeah. oven mitts, so we're in the audience <laughs> waving our our Conan oven mitts. Uh, but yeah, he does the Q and A or sorry, the, the end song there. Yeah, what was Conan he called? Was it the flaming Conan? I can't remember. What was the name of the, the flaming C? The yeah, flaming so C. The, the oven I have a shirt. Has a flaming C on it. Yeah, I, have <laughs> I have a shirt, shirt well. of that. <laughs> <Me too. laughs> but I went and saw his show. Yeah. We, my wife and I actually saw him uh, on the tonight show, the late night show oh, nice. um, on our honeymoon. Um, it was awesome. It was great. Uh, Jason Alexander and Jamie Foxx were the guests. And then Grizzly Bear was the musical guest. So, anyways, that was a good time. So heavily, yeah, excellent. We didn't. Anyways. The one thing that we didn't talk about. I do have a question before we end. Did you pick up anything cool this week, Brent? I know you didn't because you're on No by November. Mm-hmm. Chris I did pick up something cool though. Oh, all right. Pre-order, so uh, pre-order. Yeah. Sure, pre-order came. Well, actually, I got a couple pre-orders coming this week. Um, Two of which are soundtracks, but I had Adele's 30 come in. I pre-ordered that in October. I got on the white vinyl from Amazon. So I've been crying to that the last couple of days, like I said. And then this week also, uh, hey. last night, the last night in Soho soundtrack came in from Mondo, uh, as well as my, the Suicide Squad, Squad soundtrack came in. So I got a couple of cool things in this week. Yeah, that's awesome. Excellent. 
Scott, what'd you get? You got something ready to go? I do. I'm so excited for this. Oh, classic. 25th anniversary. This is like indicative of my my upbringing in in, uh, the ska punk scene. And there's a ton of albums that I don't have on vinyl. And them repressing this. Oh, that's that's um, pretty. It's a really pretty, pretty repress. Uh, there may be a video out there that exists that, that Chris may have seen of me dancing around my little office here to Johnny Quest thinks for sellouts. Uh, but I love Less Than Jake and they are, they're a huge influence on, on, uh, on my musical tastes and on, on just on my life. And this album is amazing. And to have it and hold it, um, you know, I was super excited to pick this up this week and I've been listening to it a lot. I, okay. dancing around my office here's the question do you know the song mr chevy celebrity by less than jake it's a super deep cut super old mr chevy celebrity so the reason i don't know if i, I do i'll have to go listen i might know it's, it it's, it's, I just it's don't know the title. Jake. um but it is one of the reasons i like the music i do because my older sister would play that specific song in her car all the time we would listen to it on the cassette and uh we would always rewind it after we would finish it. It's only like a minute and a half long, but it's really <laughs> funny and it's really stupid. And it was like really aggressive. And so I like, that is one of the few songs I think of my childhood instantly is Mr. Chevy Celebrity by Less Than Jake. If anybody out here is a Less Than Jake fan, please join me in listening to that song. It's a great song. I'm going to have to go look it up and listen. I'm, I've probably heard it. Um, I was there in the early days, but uh, I, I couldn't name it. Great song. Cool. Um, I got a couple new records myself. Uh, yesterday at the record store with Scott, I picked up the first Glass Beach album. Uh, Glass Beach is like a um, emo um, pop punky kind of thing. They're great though. I highly recommend. Um, they're on like the happier side of emo. They're mm. not sad and depressing. They're for they're for when you're feeling good about life. Glass happy Beach emo. is like they exactly. They're like a happy band. And on the other end of that, <laughs> I got um, <laughs> Fragments of a Bitter Memory, or yeah, Fragments of a Bitter Memory by Dying Wish. Oh my gosh. The new Dying Wish album for all the fellow hardcore kids out there, one of the best records of the year. And uh, Sharp Tone Records has unfortunately been keeping my copy back for a long time because they were waiting for something else to come in that does not come in. So I had to email them because everybody else got theirs and I did not. But I got it. It's here now. It's beautiful. One of the best hardcore records of this year and maybe the past few years. So check out Dying Wish if you're into hardcore. Nice. But yeah, that was, I, I, I feel like, you know, we, we talk about Brent doing his no buy November. I feel like this month I've bought more records than I ever have. <laughs> I've, I've been so stupid with records and ugh. I made a lot of dumb decisions, but you know. Oh, oh my god, oh my gosh. And the and um the spirit box, the singles collection came yep. in as well. That yeah. came in for me as well this week. Yeah. And you got the tricolor one? I got the tricolor one. I did as well. Beautiful album. And I got a few Christmas records recently as well, but I won't talk about those till next month. Mariah Carey. No. <laughs> All righty. Let's wrap all, this all thing up. This is genuine human contact. On you Mariah Carey, let's end this. <laughs> <laughs> You're not the first person to say that. Um, <laughs> Scott, tell the people where they can find you on the internet. Uh, it's an easy name, Vinyl by Scott on Instagram. I'm not on any other platforms. So unlike my two cool friends here, I'm not on the TikTok. Um, but Instagram only, Vinyl by Scott. He doesn't, do the, he doesn't do the emails. He doesn't do them. He doesn't do the emails. That's okay. <laughs> yep. No MySpace. We'll get up onto the emails one day. Yeah. No Weibo. All right. And and any closing words you want the people to know? Anything in particular that you're like, I wish people knew this. <laughs> uh, my favorite Circus Survive album is The Color Spectrum by The Deer Hunter. Nice. Nice. We needed it. We needed it. <laughs> nice. Okay. Brent, any closing words for our fans and our, our, our people watching us? No, just go follow the show on Instagram and Twitter at uh, Dead Wax Show. Yep, we are Do on Instagram, now. Twitter, TikTok, and will be on Facebook soon. That is my job, and I have not done it. So go like us on all the things, including the emails. Yeah. Get out of the groove. 
and I mean, get the into wax. the dead wax. Mm-mm-mm. If anybody has any suggestions, things you want to hear, questions for us, please let us know on our social media. We will happily respond. And if you would like to see me without my shirt on, go to several other websites on the internet. Everybody, have great days. Listen to records. Be with your friends. Once again, we want to say thank you to Scott for joining us. And we had the best time. Scott, you're an incredible human. I cannot wait to hug both of you until you no longer breathe. Have a great day, everybody. And thank you for watching The Dead Wax Show.